Throughout the last decade, we have seen many incredible live-action CGI movies from Marvel Studios. They have released 23 films since 2008 within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, from Iron Man in 2008 to Spider-Man Far From Home in 2019. In addition to the MCU, Marvel Studios was also involved in the production of other Marvel character film franchises like the X-Men and Spider-Man multi-film franchises. A lot of people think that Marvel Studios created the VFX for their movies. They do actually have a VFX department, but it is more of a logistic command post where they monitor and direct the work done by the VFX studios they hire. And over the last 12 years throughout which the MCU movies were created, Marvel used many VFX studios including ILM, What a Digital, Frame Store, Digital Domain, and dozens of other studios for VFX and post-production work. And since we are today talking about what kind of 3D software are used in the making of Marvel movies, the answer is gonna be almost every professional VFX and post-production software you can think of has been used to a certain extent in the production of those films. When it comes to modeling and animation, most of the studios involved in the making of those films use Maya, 3ds Max, Moto, in addition to ZBrush and Modbox for sculpting. For texture painting and texturing work, Mari and Substance Painter are the most popular, but I would say Mari is more effective because it can be used to create very large and very detailed textures with multiple UDIMs easily. For visual effects and simulations, Houdini is popular now in the industry, but a lot of studios still use Maya and 3ds Max in addition to Cinema 4D for high-end motion graphics, holograms, and digital screens. For concept art and matte painting, Photoshop is the go-to software because it has been used for this purpose for decades now, in addition to 3ds Max, Maya, and Blender as well, because concept artists use 3D software too. For compositing, 3D projection, rotoscoping, and 2D motion graphics, Nuke is the industry standard in addition to After Effects as well. Now, if you are interested in knowing how those studios contributed to the making of those films, stick around because we're gonna try to break down how different studios did their part during the whole process to get to the final result. This video is brought to you by Sketchfab, a platform for buying and selling 3D models online. Their store has a lot of high quality models to choose from using a great model inspector. Links in the description. To show how different studios collaborated with Marvel Studios to create visual effects, we're gonna take a close look at the Avengers Infinity War movie as an example. Visual effects for this film were created by Industrial Light & Magic, Frame Store, Method Studios, Weta Digital, Double Negative, Cinesight, Digital Domain, Rise, Lola VFX, and Perception Studios. The main title sequence was created by Perception Studios. Sequences from the film for visual effects vendors were given to them beginning in February 2017 and they started working on the new main title sequence, which is amazing. Digital Domain worked on creating Thanos for the film, producing over 400 visual effects shots. They created a new facial capture application called Masquerade, based on the concept of machine learning through computer algorithms specifically created for the film, beginning to work on the system three to four months before filming began to develop and test it. Digital Domain also created Red Skull and was aided by reference material from Captain America the First Avenger to create the CGI character. Before the start of filming, Brawling's facial expressions were captured with ILM's Medusa system, which along with his motion capture data from the set were fed to Masquerade to create a high-resolution version of what Brawlin did on set, so animators could apply that on the CGI character. What a digital worked on the fight on Titan, where they also created a separate version of Thanos, applying the performance capture data to the tools Weta developed for their work on the 2010's Planet of the Apes series. Weta worked on 200 shots of him, along with their 250 other visual effects shots that included the Titan environment and other characters in the fight. Framestore created 253 shots for the film for the New York fight sequence in the first act of the film. Their shots were a mix of full CG shots, played shots, effects, set extensions, magic spells, and a lot of character work. Framestore's capture lab spent a month shooting photo references and panoramas to capture the environments that had to be recreated digitally, capturing more than 250,000 photos and 15 terabytes of data. For their work on the Black Order members, Framestore spent close to a year developing their models, working with Marvel Studios' visual development team to create animation vignettes 
to explore each member's personalities and character traits. Framesoul also created Iron Man's new suit, the Mark 50, which moved around his body to form a suit, and was developed alongside Marvel for about two years and Spider-Man's Iron Spider armor suit. The models and textures for the Iron Spider suit were shared with fellow visual effects studios, such as Trickster, in order for them to implement them in Spider-Man Homecoming, where it was first seen. Framesoul also worked on the Black Order's Q-Ship, and Doctor Strange Eldritch Magic, which was updated from the first appearance in Doctor Strange. Rice Studios worked on the post credit sequence, the opening scene in the Central Park, the scene when Black Panther presents Bucky Barnes with his new arm, interior shots of the Quinjet, and an establishing shot of the planet Vormit, which totaled 26 shots. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.